Millions are trapped in a war zone. Food and water are running out. 2.7 million people have already been displaced. Sudan's civil war is a humanitarian crisis unlike any other. Let's see what's happening on the ground and know why Sudan's civil war is worse than we think. Last year in April, the city of Khartoum was shaken by serious violence, which caused panic among its citizens. There was a war between Sudan's military and the rapid support forces. Each side blamed the other for starting the conflict. Foreign countries urgently evacuated their citizens, both by plane and along dangerous desert routes. Some of these roads were filled with burned-out military vehicles, a stark reminder of the ongoing conflict. Thousands desperately fled the city, while embassies suffered looting. Sadly, millions of Sudanese remain trapped in their homes, with supplies decreasing and the threat of violence looming over their head. As of January 2024, approximately 25 million people, including over 14 million children, urgently need assistance and support. The ongoing conflict has forced over 7.4 million people to flee their homes, representing roughly 15% of the country's population. This makes Sudan the worst displacement crisis globally. Half of Sudan's population needs humanitarian aid. To address this dire situation, the United Nations and its partners have set a goal of assisting 14.7 million people through 2024. The situation worsened in December when the conflict reached Aj Jazeera. Over half a million people fled within a month, many for the second time after previously escaping violence in Khartoum. Disease outbreaks in Sudan are unfortunately on the rise. Nearly 9,600 suspected cholera cases have been reported, with over 200 deaths occurring as of January 2024. Breakdowns in basic healthcare services worsen this situation. Disease tracking, public health labs, and emergency response teams struggle to function properly. Safety concerns, displaced populations, and shortages of medicine, electricity, and clean water make providing healthcare extremely difficult. Currently, about 65% of the population has no access to basic medical care. In conflict zones, the situation is even worse, with 70-80% of hospitals unable to operate. Outbreaks of diseases like measles, malaria, and dengue fever are also a serious concern throughout the country. According to the World Food Program, most people in Sudan cannot afford to eat enough. As of March 2024, 18 million people are facing severe food insecurity in Sudan, with 5 million on the brink of starvation. The World Food Program is urgently appealing for an end to the fighting and stressing the need for humanitarian organizations to be granted full access to those in need across the region. Sudan's neighbors, like Ethiopia, Chad, and South Sudan, struggle with political unrest and conflict. The situation in Sudan impacts these countries, for example, causing Sudanese refugees to seek shelter within their borders. The relationship between Sudan and Ethiopia is particularly strained over border disputes. Major powers like Russia, the US, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE compete for influence within Sudan. Saudi Arabia and the UAE view Sudan's transition period as a chance to reduce Islamist power in the region. They've formed the Quad Alliance with the US and Britain to support mediation efforts in Sudan alongside the UN and the African Union. Meanwhile, Western powers worry about Russia gaining a foothold near the Red Sea, a possibility Sudan's military leaders haven't ruled out. The reason for war. The fight began in April 2023 from a rivalry between two powerful generals. General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan leads the regular armed forces, while General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, known as Hamedti, commands the Rapid Support Forces paramilitary group. This power struggle isn't new. It began years ago when former dictator Omar al-Bashir purposely pitted different security forces against each other. After al-Bashir was overthrown in 2019, a peaceful transition of power failed, and this showdown became inevitable. In the weeks before the recent clashes, tensions grew steadily worse. Former President Omar al-Bashir initially formed Sudan's Rapid Support Forces. Their original purpose was to fight a rebellion in the Darfur region that started because the central government ignored its needs. Unfortunately, the Rapid Support Forces, then known as the Janjaweed, became associated with widespread violence and human rights abuses. In 2013, Bashir gave the Rapid Support Forces more official status and military ranks. He then sent them to fight in multiple conflicts, including the wars in Yemen and Libya. The Rapid Support Forces initially worked with Sudan's regular army, under General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, to remove Bashir from power in 2019. However, 
The rapid support forces later turned on peaceful protesters in Khartoum, killing and injuring many people. Sudan's journey towards democracy has been tough. After protests dethroned former leader Bashir, civilians and the military tried sharing power. This was meant to lead to a democratic government. However, in October 2021, a military coup happened, putting the army back in control. The coup triggered continuous protests and made Sudan's economic problems worse. Recently, a powerful military leader, Hamedti, backed a new plan for democratic change. This highlights tensions between him and another top military leader, Burhan. Hamedti is incredibly wealthy, with much of his fortune coming from illegal gold mines. He commands a massive, experienced fighting force. He's been unhappy with his role as Sudan's official deputy leader for some time. This is somehow the reason for the start of this war. We've explored the devastating realities of Sudan's civil war, a conflict that raises complex questions about the causes of war, the responsibility of the international community, and the enduring human cost of violence. As viewers, let's carry these questions with us long after this video ends. It's time to demand action from world leaders and support humanitarian organizations working on the ground.